So, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro's and Paramount Pictures, I believe. Uh, D&D movie, Honor Among Thieves, hit the theaters. And what do I think of it? Uh, this is a question that many of you have been asking me. And uh, I apologize. It did take me a little time to get to go see it. I have kind of a packed schedule 99% of, uh, of the time. So I had to, I had to work it in. Um, and I originally said I was not going to see this movie. I had zero interest. The marketing was just awful. The trailers were awful. The vibes it was giving. Not what I was looking for. Uh, but you guys wanted my opinion. And uh, I said, you know what? Fine. I'll go see it. And um, let you guys know if you should waste your money or not. Um, so, having gone and seen it, what did I think? Well... I didn't get what I wanted, okay? I was not surprised about that. Uh, I knew that from the beginning. Uh, what I really wanted out of a D&D &D movie was something a little more serious. You know, I wanted something uh, maybe not quite as serious as Lord of the Rings. Um, maybe something more original trilogy Star Wars. Something that had a serious plot, had a serious adventure, could be broken into a trilogy. Uh, with a wide universe to explore, uh, but it had kind of a dry underlying humor to it to keep it light at certain points. That's really what I wanted out of a Dungeons & Dragons movie, uh, particularly with the technology we have today. That is what I have been waiting for to happen after all this time. That being said, even though I didn't get what I wanted, I did enjoy what I got. I know that's probably going to surprise you, um, I did heavily criticize the trailers in the marketing, um, and I, I can't tell you, nobody is more surprised than me that I walked out liking this movie. Um, it was good. Uh, from beginning to end, the pacing was, was great. The humor was great. The characters were well-developed. They, they had great chemistry. Almost Whedon-esque, if you go back to, like, um, the Buffy era or Firefly era, uh, they, they almost had that level of rapport. And um, all I can say, uh, j just out of the gate here, is whoever at Hasbro or Wizards of the Coast is allowing these writers to talk to people should stop. Because that whole emasculating the main character thing didn't really happen here. I didn't notice that at any point. The, the males, I thought, were treated quite well. I thought the women characters were also treated quite well. Nobody was really a Mary Sue. Uh, nobody was being condescending towards one gender or one ethnicity or one religion. It was just a fun movie. Uh, I originally anticipated this being something like um, Guardians of the Galaxy meets Fast and the Furious, which would have been a really bad vibe. But it's not quite that ridiculous. Uh, it's not the joke a minute that you get from your average Disney Marvel movie. The, the humor here is fast and furious at points, not like the movies, but in terms of pacing, but it also slows down and gives you time to breathe and lets you settle in before the next joke comes around. It also has some serious moments, some tender moments, moments that really will touch you. And the, the overall message for this thing is really good. It, Yes, there's sort of a heist thing going on. Uh, yes, there's fighting monsters and dragons and things like that. But really, the main current of the story is about fatherhood and, and what lengths a father will go to for his child, whom he loves. I thought it showed a great respect for the universe, given that this is a comedy. Um, even... Outside of the fact that it's a comedy, most of the stuff is pretty well respected, and even the things that uh, some really hardcore fans uh, might say, oh, they kind of cheapened that a little bit, it worked in the vein of what this was. A really good example, um, as you'll probably see here shortly on the, the looping trailer that I've got going on, there is a, um, if not, you'll see it in the thumbnail, there is a, uh, there is a dragon, not that one, um, in this movie... Um, well, you've seen him in the trailers. He's a little overweight, okay? He's a, he's a fat dragon. That is actually a lore accurate, or a lore... There is a dragon in the lore that this is representing. Um, I won't spoil who it is, but uh, 
you probably know if you know anything about the D&D lore. And they played up a little bit, okay? The dragon in real lore isn't supposed to be quite that fat, but they played up a little bit because it's a comedy, right? Um, and the gags work really well here. You can tell the people who wrote this movie do have a love for the game. They have played as player characters. They have played as DMs. They know the creatures. Because the jokes they play off of these things are funny. Uh, I don't want to spoil any of them, because if you go see them, I don't. I want you to get the same laugh. But the one thing I'll say is this movie, the best way to, des to describe it, this is a movie with a semi-serious setting, but imagine your group was in it. Or if you're a DM, your player characters are in it. That is pretty much what this movie is. They None of their plans work, okay? Their, their first plan always goes to shit. They screw things up. There, there, is, a, uh, there is a gag for the uh, speaking with the dead spell. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to swell exactly what takes place during that scene, but I can tell you I have seen that in my own games. Um seeing players just bungle it so badly. Just all around. That's really what it feels like. It feels like you're watching a a table, a party, a, a party members at a table's story act out. This is almost like this is a module and you plopped your players in it and these are the results. That's how I felt about it. It was a good fun. The villain, uh, the villains were um, were well placed. They they felt they felt like serious threats. And uh, there's a lot of moments where the party simply wins out of dumb luck, not out of their great planning. And that is really what you experience at a table a lot of times. So yeah, I I don't have a lot of complaints. Uh, my core one is probably going to be the owl bear. Obviously, um, I think that's a given. Uh, uh, of course, Wizard of the Coast is now changing the rules, so that'll be allowed. Um, but I don't agree with the druid turning into an owlbear thing. That, that would be a good example, I suppose, of the DM of the story applying the rule of cool, I guess. But uh, it definitely isn't something that would be allowed at the game table. And um, the only other thing, there, there was a few jarring moments in terms of travel. Now, I get it. This movie is not really a D&D campaign, per se, so it's not going to... You're not going to watch all 30 days of travel go by. Uh, they're not going to be counting their rations in front of you on the screen. Uh, but there were a few moments where the transition happened so fast that I was kind of jarred taking it out of it for a moment. Um, in fact, the scene that you see in the preview here of the owl bear kind of uh, showing up for the first time, the wizard Simon... Uh, is the one who knows the druid, and he takes the party to go find her, and they go from him talking about it like, oh yeah, yeah, we're going to go find her. It immediately cuts to a scene of them coming to a clearing, and he just knew exactly where she was. Uh, in the middle of a forest, even though that's not where he was expecting her to be, um, he could pick her out as an animal amongst a sea of animals. I'm not going to say what kind. I, I don't want to spoil too many details here. He just randomly knew that she was there stuff like that that small little things like that pulled me out for like i don't know six seconds but it's so good at pulling you right back in you barely even notice uh so yeah i would recommend seeing this movie now obviously you're gonna have to make your own moral judgments on whether you want to give money to wizard of the coast or not i can tell you that it's not tracking to profit so even if you go now it doesn't matter they're not gonna profit they're gonna lose money no matter what so if you want to see the movie go see it if you don't, on a moral stance, hey, that's up to you too. I just wanted to share my thoughts, let you know, I thought this was a good movie. And it was not woke. There, there was no woke elements to this movie. It was simply a movie about a, uh, a group of misadventurers in a D&D setting. Uh, so that's all I got. Uh, check it out um, if you feel like doing so. And um, yeah, don't feel too guilty about it. Uh, they did a good job. Uh, I'm actually kind of sad it's going to fail. Uh, I hate. I, hate, I know that's weird to say, but uh, I would like to see them uh, continuing this sort of thing. Uh, maybe it'll get close enough that they'll green light a second one, or maybe they'll they'll have a change of pace and I'll finally get what I want. Uh, oh, this is the other negative. This is the other negative. If this does well and people will receive it well, and it seems like people are receiving it well, even if it's not going to financially do well. It pretty much guarantees they're going to continue down the comedic route, which means uh, I am highly unlikely to get my serious take on the D&D &D universe. 
But hey, if it doesn't make the money, who knows what could happen? Uh, that's it. So, yeah, let me know what you think of the movie in the comments. Um, feel free to pick it apart as much as you please, or even roast me for daring to like a D&D movie. Um, and I will talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.